regularly come to our concerts will notice our cellist is looking a little different tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Mark has had to rush away with a serious family emergency. So we are so grateful to Sue our lead to come for coming to join us. She's actually interrupted a holiday in the Highlands, so <laughs> yes. So good. be nice to her. So yeah. be nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you, Sue. It's been a pleasure. It will be a pleasure. And continue to be a pleasure. <laughs> um, I'll hand you over to Time, and he'll tell you all about the treasures we have for you tonight. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So, as you know, these uh, sessions are sort of us playing what we feel like playing, and uh, it becomes clear that there's a theme always there, which is folk music. And uh, to talk about the role of folk music in classical music is a bit is a bit like talking about the use of onions in world kitch kitchens. I mean, you know, it's everywhere, always, in every time. It's just there. So we're just going to play something, some things for you from all these different times. Um, we found an Armenian priest called Komitas who traveled around Armenia to hear all the folk songs and wrote them down. Um, of course, we wrap it around some Dvorak, which is, of course, one of the famous uh, classical examples of it. Um, but we'll start with Danish folk music. Um, there is a quartet around the, the world these days called the Danish String Quartet, and they do this amazing thing that they play all the Bartoks and the Beethovens, and sometimes they just retreat in a little cabin in the woods, and they start writing down all these little folk tunes that they know, and they arrange them for String Quartet. Um, so we are happily playing a, a trilogy that they wrote down, a bridal trilogy, which is three songs played at weddings in islands around Denmark, and. Um, hundreds and hundreds of years old and now arranged. And it's nice that it's a trilogy because there's an old tradition which they still use at these weddings because of course most of these weddings were sailors going up for sea. So, you know, there were not all happy situations. I mean, it was nice to get married, but the next day probably he left and, you know, four months later maybe he would come back or not. So they had to have three shots of alcohol at these weddings, one for the sweet, one for the sour, and one for the bitter part of your marriage life that was going to come up. So the third one that you're going to hear um, is is definitely the, the bitter part of it. We'll play that first to confuse you, to confuse ourselves <laughs> as well. Um, and then the, f the, the first one, which we'll play last, is also quite funny. It's a dance, and it says... It should be sung and danced with such devoutness that the skirts of the women won't move in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> because it was a wedding after all, so those, the skirts had to stay down. Anyway, um, we're going to start with the Danish song.
continue with a bit of Dvorak, who is, of course, maybe sort of well, the most well-known for putting the love of his country in the music, especially when he left his country and the happiness when he came back. But, it, I mean, it has nothing to do with Dvorak, but it reminds me of this beautiful thing I once read of a, of a cafe in Paris, a tiny little dark cafe maybe like this, where three hugely amazing composers sat down together. I hope I remember them. I think Albanis de Paya in Granados, and they were sipping their little Parisian drinks. And uh, this is, a, this is a, a real story, a true story. <laughs> <laughs> and um, apparently they sort of made a pact, they talked to each other and they said, listen, we are here in Paris, you know, the center of the, the Western music. We swear to each other that we keep our own country's music alive in the music that we write. And there was a sort of, you know, they, they committed to that. <laughs> Which is, which is, you know, you can hear in their music, and it's beautiful to know that they actually sort of consciously talked about it with us. <laughs> um, that has nothing to do with Dvorak, but <laughs> <laughs> listen how much he loved his own country. Yes. <laughs>
to say how absolutely delighted and what a treat it is for me to be here and all of this repertoire is actually new for me to play so they, this Beethoven in particular I think they already played it last Sunday and they're about to play it again this week so um, I hope I didn't mess it up for them <laughs> 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 but um, it really is such a treat and I'm very happy to be here oh, well, lovely, yeah. you get less cocktails afterwards if you yeah. mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only point so we're playing now oh, yes. Opus 80, number six uh, by Beethoven, the first movement. Thank you. 
He was very early, it was the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, and it was a very exa early example of someone actually travelling around the villages and collecting all these, these folk tunes. And um, he's a bit of a national hero in Armenia. The music college is named after him, apparently. And I, I think lots of people believe that if he hadn't collected these tunes, none of them would survive. Um, I was actually, actually introduced to them by my 
Armenian violin teacher, Levon Chiringirian, who I studied with at the College of Music. Um, and he, he has a, a great love for these pieces, which has somehow infected me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, there are four of these pieces. Um, the first one is called Dear Sugar. The second one is called The Clouds. The third is Spring, which is actually quite a sad... Uh, it's about lost love, I think, actually. Um, and the last one is a kind of wild, wild um, dance. <laughs>
um, we're going back to Dvorak, and um, I finally found a, found a reason to bring my phone to stage and to even bring it out, which <laughs> normally I would never do. <laughs> but um, we're going to play two of uh, the side presses wrote by Edwin Dvorak. Um, he wrote a song cycle. I think it's 12, 14, 12 or 14. Oh dear. <laughs> Songs. And uh, he later then arranged them himself for a string quartet. And we're going to play two of the absolute most beautiful ones of them picked by me, therefore. Um, <laughs> I didn't make them beautiful, I just picked them. Um, and I'm going to give you the text of the song because it, that's quite nice, of course. My check is a bit rusty, so I found some dodgy tomograms with these incredible check in his, <laughs> in his good days. No, let's not go there. Um, I need to find the right one. So we're starting with number two, which is called In Many a Heart, Death Dwells. In many a heart, death dwells, as in a dark desert. In such a heart, there is only room for sadness and illness. The burning love enters into the heart to deceive it. The sad heart pines and thinks it is in love. In that sweet state, that state of paradise, the dead heart revives again and sings sings its old song. sweet power of your eyes. I would gladly, gladly perish by the sweet power of your eyes. If your beautiful smile did not bring me back to life, I would always happily choose that sweet death with this love, this love in my breast, but only if I knew that your sweet lips would wake me from my rest. Thank you. 
cheerful. <laughs> um, we'll play the last movement of the Dvorak we played earlier, the first movement of so the Allegro Assai from Opus 51 in E flat major. Thank you so much for coming and uh, hope you had a nice little cocktail and <laughs> come back next time, bring your friends.
Thank you. 